From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Dave DeForest reporting. The Islamic State group claims it has seized the Iraqi provincial capital of Ramadi. That would give the militants their largest victory this year. In Washington, the Pentagon has refused to confirm the IS statement, saying only that Ramadi remains fluid and contested. But others, including a spokesman for the governor of Anbar province, said the government soldiers are fleeing the city. The Saudi-led coalition has resumed airstrikes against Shiite rebels in Yemen after the end of a five-day humanitarian ceasefire. The ceasefire expired late Sunday, and the coalition airstrikes hit rebel positions in the southern port city of Aden. Three people were killed Sunday when a car bomb exploded near a European Union convoy traveling close to Kabul's international airport. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the suicide attack. A British security contractor and two women bystanders are dead. Dozens of people were wounded. Burundian President Pierre N. Kurunziza has made his first public appearance since a coup attempt last week. At a news conference Sunday at the presidential palace in the capital Bujumbura, the president did not mention the failed coup plot or protests over his bid for a third term in office. Instead, he described talks with presidents of nearby African countries on threats from Somalia's al-Shabaab militants who have warned of attacks against Burundi and other nations that contribute troops to the African Union force in Somalia. This is VOA News. Pro-Israel demonstrators and Israeli police fought Sunday with rock-throwing Palestinians in occupied East Jerusalem. The violence flared as thousands of Jewish nationalists marched through the city to mark the 48th anniversary of its capture during the 1967 Six-Day War. Several police were reported injured, and at least six Palestinians were arrested in the confrontations. Macedonians rallied in the capital Skopje on Sunday with more than 20,000 protesters calling for the resignation of Prime Minister Nikola Gruevsky. Pressure on the leader has been building since a wiretapping scandal broke earlier this year, prompting questions about how tightly the government there has controlled the media, judges and elections. The nation's opposition leader is vowing that the demonstrations will continue until the prime minister steps down. Ukraine says three of its soldiers were killed and 17 wounded in fighting with pro-Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine. A Ukrainian military spokesman said two of the deaths occurred from a mortar attack near the town of Slitkodarsk. Meanwhile, U.S. Assistant Secretary for European and Eurasian Affairs Victoria Nuland is in Moscow for meetings with Russian officials in a new bid to try to implement the truce. She is also meeting with non-government Russian groups during a two-day visit. Nine people are dead and several wounded after a shootout among rival motorcycle gangs at a central Texas restaurant. The violence erupted shortly after noon at a busy Waco marketplace along Texas Interstate 35. America's passenger rail service, Amtrak, will resume service in the busy Northeast Corridor on Monday. Service was halted last week following a deadly train derailment near Philadelphia. Amtrak President Joseph Boardman said his crew has been working around the clock to restore service along the route between Washington and Boston. Tuesday night's crash killed eight people and injured more than 200. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is in South Korea. He's there to discuss global, regional, and bilateral issues with President Park Geun-hye and Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se. North Korea's nuclear program will be included in the talks. Malaysia launched new talks with its neighbors Sunday, trying to resolve a deepening crisis concerning refugees stranded at sea on boats that no nation appears willing to let come ashore. Malaysian Foreign Minister Anifa Aman met with his counterpart from Bangladesh. He is also planning meetings with Indonesian and Thai foreign ministers on Wednesday. From the VOA News Center in Washington, I'm Dave DeForest. That's the latest world news from VOA.